Hello my soccer universe, why well, still not much better but you know, let's, the show must go on and we talk now about Austria and Germany and Germany two rounds because last week I only talked about what happened when we were at the last game so we have quite some interesting things in Germany to talk about, uh, namely this really weird back and forth with first Dortmund dropping uh, points uh, to Schalke. Seemingly this was the point where Bayern could have sailed away and we thought, yeah, Dortmund is hitting the skids, potentially, maybe. Although, uh, if you look at the game at Schalke, it was one that they threw away. Only to come storming back, 6-1 against Cologne, and then Bayern lose to Leverkusen in the most ridiculous matter, uh, with two penalties. Where VAR, where VAR actually saved Leverkusen, a Leverkusen team that I am wearing and that actually has been performing really strong under Xabi Alonso so far. We have also a very interesting shirt released already. Over in Austria, uh, we have now the end of the regular season and while there were still, you know, it was three teams for two spots, However, the drama was rather minimal, although one game really, really, really tried to deliver all the drama. And that's where we actually will start uh, this video with Austria Lustig against Klagenfurt. Klagenfurt, in order to secure their spot in the upper playoff, in the championship round, they needed a win. Uh, then, uh, uh, and you know, Tyrol should not uh, do anything against Sturm Graz. A win that did not get it. It was a game that did not go Klagenfurt's way from the beginning with Florian Rieder being sent off or in the fourth minute with a red card. Then they score an own goal in the 26th minute. Then they get a, pe a penalty, uh, deserve it one after um, the co their coach was already giving a yellow card. Penalty is converted by Irving, he's uh, the classic penalty, penalty taken, who then taunts uh, everyone. Is given a yellow card and coach Packold is also was not happy and was given another yellow card and sent off. Problem is he didn't really want to leave. He was just standing there <laughs> and smiling. That was all he did until an assistant, the captain needed to inform an assistant who informed the coach to finally move and you could see. I mean Peter Packold is one of those, um, how to say, he's a very special character within the Austrian game. Let's put it that way. Um, and then it's sent to that it's going a 1-1, one, one, a 1-1 one, one that probably uh, would already have sufficed, but then DRB with a really nice shot uh, gives a, a loose, loose now a 2-1 lead. He scores a goal that was not given for offside and then only in stoppage time. I mean, then uh, Klagenfurt, it was uh, not really a great game then there, but three goals scored in stoppage time where uh, Chiquilla uh, makes it first 3-1, uh, then Pink pulls on back in a 9 for only that Gedikli uh, makes it 4-2, a, a result that could have put Klagenfurt in a loads of trouble, especially since the other Austria against um, in the Viennese Derby won also 2-0 uh, in a very intense game uh, that was relatively even and then was decided on two defensive errors. The first one, um, probably the free goal of the season where Rapid thought that the ball is going uh, over the goal line and Leidner just ahead of the defender pulls the ball back into play. Uh, it's not quite clear whether he, it was in or, or out. And then it falls to the Bakovic who totally mishits it. But with that mishit, it makes a weird bounce into the goal. Freak goal. And that gave Austria Vienna the lead and then they kind of could control and Leidner uh, with a really nice move makes it then 2-0. And Austria Vienna win two derbies in a row and also secure their uh, spot in the championship round and for the first time since the new format was both Viennese teams have qualified so there will be two more Viennese derbies and there's some trouble brewing at Rapid Vienna for sure. And then the last game that was uh, decisive is the last one here on the menu Tirol against Sturm they have never even uh, they have never won against Sturm they needed a win to have any chance however Sturm were just better and then if your uh, one of your best defense Bayernik makes another mistake and Mega runs through on the goalie, it's 1-0 uh, and then Ayeti 2-0. As for my team, Lask, uh, it was a 2-2 draw at Hartberg, a team that they have not won at in 
ages, uh, which is rather, rather embarrassing. It was not a good, good performance. They get the 2-2 two, two draw, uh, late equalizer, thanks to the on, on, on goal, but also defensive errors allowed Hartberg twice to go in the lead. Especially the first goal, a wide range shot should never have happened this way. Let's face it. Um, and then another remarkable result, Salzburg Altach 1-1 won, won, uh, and Salzburg equalized late in that one, didn't really show up, uh, but it was not enough to save Miroslav Klose, who has been fired now by Altach, which I was a little bit surprised, to. I would have given him maybe a little bit more um, time and maybe see the season out, but they're afraid that they get relegated, well, you should have gotten relegated last season, so please stick with your coach, but yeah. So, at the end of the regular season, we have now the top six have qualified for the championship round, the bottom six for the qualification round or against relegation. Uh, regarding the championship, it's not really, really exciting. Uh, but uh, for relegation, there seems to be a little bit of a tighter fight. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. I also want to point out on the right side, we actually see now the, the performance graph are now final, if you would like. Um, on the difference between uh, projecting and expecting. And we see that Salzburg and Sturm have been uh, doing much better than they would based on, on the rating with Lask also positive. Rapid right on the target. Austria Vienna all performing despite uh, three points in the minus. And we see that the last four are the underperformers with especially Wolfsburg being a disappointment. Now, as I said, upper playoff points will be half. So the current standings are as follows. Um, it is much tighter, of course. It's only three points between Salzburg and Sturm Graz. And if Salzburg weren't so super consistent against everyone and Sturm Graz, maybe not so much. I could actually see Sturm Graz making up the difference. Lask is a little bit in no man's land, although I have to say the two Viennese teams a little bit dangerous. You don't want to be six because that means no European qualification. Now, um, the positive side is that Lask has been performing much better against the top teams than against the bottom teams. So uh, that actually makes me slightly optimistic, but the performances need to pick up. And on the bottom, uh, it is only six points between first and last, and it's it's a slugfest as always, and I'm not sure how fair it is overall. Uh, and you see on the other side the expected final standings now. This is now at the beginning. Not much change from what we had before. Maybe that Lustena should finish ahead of Wolfsburg, but um, we'll see. We'll see about that. Let's go talk German Bundesliga. Uh, this is now the previous week weekend, um, which uh, started with a bang where Köln lost 2-0 at home to Bochum, a Bochum team that was a serious re relegation trouble. And that meant, uh, that was all the result that kind of meant that Köln gotta watch, watch out because you might slip into relegation trouble uh, out of nowhere because Köln have been a decent team, but uh, lately they have not been performing well. Bayern found themselves 1-0 down to Mergen Berisha's goal in the second minute, but then pulled it in the next, next year and by halftime had a 4-1 lead. Jacques Cancelo, uh, Pavard with two goals and uh, Leroy Sané scoring the goals. Uh, and then in the second half, you know, it was kind of let it slide a little bit. Berisha with a penalty pulled one back, then Davies makes it 5-2. Uh, and then uh, Cardoso, 5-3. Uh, but, you know, it was done at halftime. Frankfurt uh, also find themselves a little bit in a funk. And after this 1-1 one, one where they uh, conceded against a relegation threatened Stuttgart, an equalizer, Coach Glasner went into the next, next gear saying, you know, I don't, he's the same idiot in a way, but... They have played the, fir the best half series in history. They have qualified for the Champions League for the first time. They made it to the knockout stage. They are still present in the cup and they have no confidence. We're idiots. And that's exactly what I have to say. I mean, Frankfurt look without confidence and they have one of the uh, best squads in Germany. It's rather, rather mystifying. Hertha and Mainz a 1-1, Leipzig then a 3-0 easy over Gladbach. And then the Ruhr between Schalke and Dortmund was a game that Dortmund really controlled in the first half. Uh, probably should have had more than the one goal through Schlotterbeck. And then in the second half it got emotional and that's what Schalke needed. Uh, they get the equalizer through Bulta, but Rafa Guerrero 10-10 minutes later gives Dortmund again the lead and then they let themselves get sucked into the emotion. 
Um, and let Schalke back in and they get the equalizer through Karaman, a game that definitely Dortmund dropped points and Schalke won a point and actually a game that should have given Schalke a lot of confidence because they have barely lost this season but they are also not getting wins so that's the one thing that uh, speaks against Schalke. Freiburg put Hoffenheim in a little bit more trouble by winning 2-1 despite being 1-0 down as far as I know. Leverkusen win a wild one at Bremen and Wolfsburg and uh, Union uh, play out a 1-1 one -one draw. So those were the Sunday games which were of course all affected because of the Europa League. Then on the past weekend another wild game for Bremen who salvage a 2-2 draw. Augsburg and Schalke play a 1-1 again a draw for Schalke. And Bochum get another big win, 1-0 against Leipzig. A Leipzig team that just got uh, peppered by Manchester City and are probably very happy that the international break is coming. Big one in the relegation battle, 3-1 Hoffenheim over Hertha, uh, meaning that Hertha now is getting back into trouble and Hoffenheim maybe get themselves out of trouble under Matarazzo. There's not much I can tell you about Stuttgart or Wolfsburg, except that Stuttgart played in their... Um, wonderful uh, uh, diversity jer uh, jerseys in black with a uh, rainbow uh, accoutrements. It was, a, it's a great looking jersey, I gotta say. It's like the home jer uh, the, the jersey in black with all the, uh, the rainbow colors. I actually really enjoyed that one. And then Dortmund just destroyed Köln. Tola destroyed Köln. Do you remember Köln destroyed Bremen at the beginning? So now uh, Köln is a little bit on the slide, I have to say. Rafa Guerrero 15th, Sebastian Alea in the 17th, and then 32nd Royce and 36th Marlen, Marlen scores. Uh, Selke pulls one back, but then Sebastian Alea and uh, Royce complete the route. Frankfurt, as I said, in the funk, they c actually controlled that game mostly. They had way more expected goals than Union Berlin. However, Union Berlin are just uh, ruthless at home. Remy Kadira gives them a 1-0 and then Behrens makes it 2-0 uh, and in between there were good saves, there were many misses. Frankfurt should have gotten out of one, something out of this game and will rue that one and I think it's also good that Frankfurt is now getting a break and maybe can regroup from there. And then the big one, Leverkusen beating Bayern 2-1. Uh, a Bayern team where there were some um, weird things with that uh, a player, a mole, has given technical details uh, to the press by making pictures, blah, 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 which is so Bayern in a way, and this is always coming up. Bayern did not play well. However, they took the lead through uh, jo uh, Joshua Kimmich in the 22nd. Uh, it was well played, but it was also a deflection because otherwise this would have been saved. Uh, but it was a tale of penalties and a rather funny one. At, at the, the first penalty came uh, in just 10 minutes after the half, when Pavard steps onto Adli and the referee gives him a yellow card for um, uh, for falling, uh, or simulating in, in, in a way, but Adli shows him, you know, I lost my shoe. I did not simulate, I lost my shoe. And he sees it in the replay, waves off the yellow card, gives a penalty, Palacios converts. And then just 15 minutes later, the same spiel. But this time, Adli runs into the box. He is felt by Upa Meccano. And again, he's falling over. It seems, in a way, like this may have been another uh, simulation. He duly gets another yellow card for same simulation. And he tells the referee, please, watch it on the screen. Watch it on, on the screen. He watches on the screen. And a referee stealer come, comes in or already smiling and kind of, you know, sorry. The yellow card doesn't count, they kind of made up, but it was kind of a little bit of horror, a horror, an amusing horror show by the referee. However, this is why we need VAR, and we get another uh, penalty. It's 2-1, and Bayern really cannot find their way back, and lose top of the table. Because Dortmund have won, they were two points behind, now they are one point ahead. Mainz and Freiburg, Mainz another 1-1, one, one, this time a home at Freiburg. And so... Current standings, as I said, Dortmund are now top of the table. There are many movements in the, in the, in the table. We have Union and Freiburg put, uh, getting back in. Leipzig now being out of the top for Frankfurt, sitting in the sixth spot. But uh, it's more a defensive position. You have to stay in the Europa League, which they are good, good enough. Wolfsburg and Leverkusen are threatening to get in there, there as well. 
I don't trust quite Mainz too, to be honest. The rest, uh, there's a very thin midfield, but I would argue that with Augsburg, the relegation zone starts. Um, where Hertha and Schalke at the moment are favorites to go down. Um, if you see the expected standings, you actually uh, can make it out Hertha and Schalke going down. And now, if you needed another twist in the tail, look at the upcoming games. The next game is Bayern Dortmund. Um, and that will tell us a whole lot. And I would expect Bayern to steamroll Dortmund, but we had it before. We also have another big duel between Köln and Gladbach. That's a proper der der derby. So there is plenty of stuff to look forward to right after the break and probably will warrant a video I give you also for the next round where Freiburg Bayern and Dortmund Union Berlin. This is also, you know, two top four duels as it stands. Any case, this was it from me from the two Bundesligas. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Add anything below that you uh, would like to add to this video if you have any questions and I will surely talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.